For number six, we are going to determine the least squares regression line and then graph that on a scatter diagram. So if you jump into stat crunch, you can go stat, regression, and then simple linear. We're looking if a simple linear equation, a simple line, will fit through the data. So just pick your variables here. You don't need to change any of the other settings. They're all default what we want. Um, we're trying to draw the fitted line through the data. So then if you hit compute at the bottom, you get this box of information here. Here's the equation of your line that best fits the data. And they have the intercept listed in front of the slope times x. So they have y equals b plus mx. So be sure you flip that around when you enter it in here. y equals mx plus b. But there's the equation of the line that best fits the data. And notice it also shows you the correlation coefficient here, along with a bunch of other information. Click the arrow here, and you can see what the scatter plot would look like with that line. That's This is the line that's as close to all the points as we can possibly make a line. So this is the best fit line through all those points. For number seven, we're determining the least squares regression line and the sum of the squared residuals. So jump into stack crunch exactly like we did for number six. And you can get the equation of the least squared regression line. And then at the bottom of the table, the sum of the squares, if you go to the error, that's what you want. 105.1 is the sum of the squared residuals. And so to visualize what that number even means, if you took the, dis the distance between each point and this best fit line, so the distance each point away is from the line, squared all those distances, and then summed them up. That's the sum of the squared residuals. For number eight, we're looking at the correlation between the number of hours of video games played each week. That's our explanatory variable. And our response variable is the student's grade point average. And we already have the equation of the best fit line here. But in part A, we're going to predict the grade point average of a student who plays eight hours of video games a week. And we use this equation to make predictions. We just plug in the value for x. In this case, we're plugging in eight. And our value for y, our grade point average, our prediction is 2.48 for someone who plays eight hours of video games. Interpret the slope. The slope of any line is always... If x changes by one unit, what is the change in y going to be? So in this case, if your video game playing increases by one unit, one hour, your change in y, your change in your grade point average, would be a negative change of 0.0536. So for every additional hour of video games you play, your grade point hour average drops by that much. Uh, Interpret the y-intercept if appropriate. Sometimes it doesn't make sense. It makes sense in this case. The y-intercept is when x equals 0. So when the number uh, of hours of video games you play in a week is 0, you don't play at all, what is your grade point average? And so our y-intercept is 2.9113. So on average, we predict that a student who plays 0 video games Zero hours of video games a week would have that grade point average. And then a student who plays seven hours a week, we would predict from plugging a seven into the equation here for x that this would be their grade point average, 2.54. But the student only has a 2.43. So in relation to what we expect from students who play seven hours a week, this particular student is below average. For number nine, our example is from the game of baseball, and our explanatory variable x is a team's on-base percentage, how often they reach the base when they're up to bat, and the response variable y is the team's winning percentage. Here's the equation of the least squares regression line, and part a, we're going to interpret the slope. The slope is always if there's a one unit change in x, how much does y change? So in this case, if there is a one percentage increase in the team's on base percentage, then we would expect their winning percentage to go up by that much. 
For this baseball season, the lowest on base percentage we observed was 0.32, the highest was 0.358. So we really only want to use this least squared regression equation to make predictions about teams with an on base percentage between these values. So we don't want to go outside the scope of our lowest observation or our highest observation. So a y intercept would be an on base percentage of zero. The y-intercept is when x is 0, and that is outside of the scope, so no, it doesn't make sense to interpret the y-intercept. But also, if you think about baseball, a team with an on-base percentage of 0, that would be an extreme outlier. That's just not going to happen, that a team never gets on base. So that situation just doesn't really make sense. If a team had an on-base percentage of 0 0.230, you would not want to use this to predict their winning percentage, because again, 0 0.230 is outside of the range of the data we observed. A certain team had an on-base percentage of 0.322. That is in our range. So let's use, let me jump into Excel here. If this was their on-base percentage, plug it into the equation. My prediction for their winning percentage would be right here. The problem says that their actual winning percentage was 0.546. So the residual is the difference between what we actually observe and what our equation here predicted. So subtract those, and we get 0 0.0864. So we, they are above the actual prediction. We have a positive value here. They're above the prediction. They're doing better than what we would expect a team who just had an on-base percentage of 0.322. For number 10, we're looking at the relationship between the number of colas that a woman drinks. That's our explanatory variable. And our response variable is the bone density for that woman. So we have a table of data. We want to open it up in StatCrunch, which I have it open already. You'd want to go to Stat Regression Simple Linear to get this table of data. The equation of your least squared regression line is here. It doesn't use X and Y in your equation. Instead, it's going to use uh, the actual labels that you pull into StatCrunch from the problem. So instead of Y, it has bone mineral density. Instead of X, it has number of coals per week. But there's the equation of the line. Interpret the slope. The slope is always for a one unit change in X. What's the change in Y? So if the number of colas increases by one each week, we would expect the change in the bone density to be this value here, which is negative, so it's a decrease in bone density by this value. Interpret uh, the intercept, so that's if x is zero, if no colas are drink during the week, so zero colas, your intercept would be your expected bone density for someone drinking zero colas. Predict the bone density for someone drinking four colas a week. Here's your equation. Plug in your x value to make a prediction. Here's what we would predict. Bone density of 0.8749. And then it says the researchers find that a woman actually has a bone density. She drinks four colas a week, and she actually has a bone density of 0.873. So you can just compare those numbers and see that this woman actually is below average from what we would predict using our line. And if you did the residual, you'd see it came out negative because she's below average when you did her actual bone density minus the prediction from the line. Uh, would you recommend using this model to predict the bone density for someone who drinks two cans of cola a day? So. Two a day would be 14 per week. And if you look at the scope of the data we gathered, we only were looking at women between 0 and 8. So anyone who drinks outside of that range between 0 and 8 cans per week, you don't want to use this regression model for anyone who drinks more than 8 soda cans. So two a day, 14 a week is definitely outside the scope of the model. Do not use this model for someone drinking that much.